Welcome back, guys. This is, uh, I think, about our fifth or sixth episode on A Shocking Good Time. Today we have Abel from Valley Shenanigans. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself today, and we're, we'll, we'll have some fun. This is Junior, or Jose. He's going to be, uh, we're going to be doing this podcast together. So, uh, Abel, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you guys for inviting me out to the podcast. Yeah, of course. Um, well, my name is Abel. I'm a founder of Valley Shenanigans social media influencer slash content creator. And uh, I have a, I'm pretty much a, I started my, uh, I want to say brand around 2016, 2017. Nice. I'm on pretty much every social media platform out there. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, th th yeah. thank you for coming on as well. We appreciate your your. You coming on to to the podcast? My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, first question is like, what got you into fishing? Like, what was what's uh what's the early uh, part of your story? I guess. Uh, mm. Well, I started fishing uh, at a young age. I was exposed to fishing because of my father. I think I was like about seven, eight years old. He took me fishing with his uh, a bunch of his friends and and cousins and stuff. And it was, <laughs> I didn't really do any fishing. I just kind of more like more along tag tagged along with them and. Uh, just, uh, it was like that for a while. I would go on his fishing trips, his hunting trips. Uh, I come from a long line, I guess you could say, of hunter hunters and fishermen. I didn't really do much hunting and fishing and early on. I just recently picked up fishing a few years ago. I want to say a little over three years ago. Yeah. That's nice. Cool. Uh, as, a, as a whole, um, Valley Shenanigans... I, I know it's a it's a page you can find them you could find um, the page on YouTube Instagram, but what's kind of like the premise of Valley Shenanigans? Why did you call it Valley Shenanigans? So it's a great name, by the way. Just, it's yeah. it's kind of catchy, on. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, that's a good question. Well, like I said, I started this late, late uh, 2016, early 2017. At the time, you know the. Uh, I was really in a bad place with the family and everybody. Uh, tragedy struck home. I lost my father in 2016. Sorry, so uh, 2017, I was just, like I said, in a bad place. I really started going out and uh, involving in, in myself into nature, trying to get back to my roots. Like I mentioned before, I originally started fishing and hunting with my father. So that's really kind of what, what brought me back into fishing and hunting and stuff. So I just would go out to, to my local lake, Eastman Lake, Hensley Lake. I would just do, I started hiking. And I was out there just hiking, healing, absorbing all the nature. And I thought to myself, man, not a lot of people come out here. Yeah. It, it, was, it did great for my mental health, did great for my physical health at the time. And uh, it was just great. And I wanted to share it with people. I wanted to share it with my community, share the beautiful trails along my local lakes. So that's exactly what I did. I started just filming what I did here and there. Early on, one of my first videos was a, a tour of a Miller house in Raymond, California. I thought that was pretty cool. It was just a, this, um, I wish I could remember her name, but she offered me a tour of the Miller house in Raymond, California. And that was one of my first official videos. So that's pretty much how I kind of got back into fishing from an early age. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, sorry for your loss. Definitely, brother. You know, from tragedy, sometimes we are able to find ourselves in all of that. And, man, that's a great story of how you're able to now spread positivity through your channel. But, uh, you know, it's, it, there is a tragedy there, and we're, I'm sorry for your loss. You're right. I mean, uh, we don't usually get, go out to nature as much as we should, and especially being here in the city and, you know, work and all kinds of things going on with family. You got friends, you got other responsibilities and home short chores at home and stuff. And man, it's, it's, it feels good. I know I went to Yosemite like a month ago and it's just beautiful, man. Just beautiful. Seeing, yeah. For me, I'm a, I believe in God and I'm like, I see God's creation and I'm like, Oh my God, like we're missing out on this and it's in our backyard. Yeah. Breathtaking, huh? Yeah. It's breathtaking. And, yeah. and I know a lot of people like they come from all over the world just to come and see what's in our backyard. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And it's being so close to home and we got to learn how to appreciate it being part of the central Valley here. And man, you're helping spread awareness for that. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm trying. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I got, I got a question. I, I, most of you guys probably don't know this. Some of you do, but 
I've known Abel um, since high school. I mean, we're we started freshman year together, and we go back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So we started in 2006 and uh, graduated in 2010. And uh, man, throughout those years, uh, I am you know we weren't super close, but we had the same kind of friends um, circle of friends, and we would see each other a lot. So I I, I know what kind of like kind of upbringing you had and stuff like that is as far as like who you were in high school. But in your own words, um, who were you that guy in high school? And who, just for the people that don't know, you know, like um, were you like a straight A student? Were you a, a you know kind of C C C student or what? What kind of person and um, I kind of like upbringing did you have during during that time? Well, during high school, we, we've known each other for, for quite a while now, and yeah. uh, like you said before, you know, in high school. We had a lot of, uh, we shared a lot of the friends group. Back then, man, fishing was not in my mind. We were talking <laughs> a few moments earlier before the pod. Fishing yeah. was definitely wasn't in my mind back then. Um, I definitely was not a straight A student. Wasn't a, a, a C, D, and F student as well. I did okay in school, you know. I, you know, we, we shared a lot of friends and we had a lot of fun out there in high school. And uh, I think uh, as far as my upbringing goes, I always try to stay away from trouble. I always thought about man, I never want to bring problems back home. I never want to uh, bring that on my parents, you know, as a, you know, my first generation here in the U.S., you know. Right, right, yeah. I was always, I always had that uh, paranoia of, man, I don't want to bring anything that involves police or anything that can get my parents in trouble back home. So I, I try to stay clear from doing bad things in high school. You know, granted, we're, we were kids back yeah. then. We were, we were teenagers, so I wasn't uh, ideal uh, pitch perfect student, but you know, we tried our best. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, from my perspective, Abel has always been very kind, very personable. Uh, he's got, he's got great charisma. I think that's why your videos are hitting honestly, because the way you portray yourself and speak and you love what you do and it's kind of comes out as effortless. And, you know, it, I, I know you put a lot of effort into it, but it's, it's something that stems from the heart. I think that it shows. You know, and uh, I feel like I think that's why you're getting a lot of traction and it's going to keep <laughs> on growing. Um, definitely. I, I see I've seen the growth in, you know, three months, four months that, that we've been actively following you pretty closely. And it, it's been growing like a wildfire, bro. Like, I'm really happy for you. Thank um, you. I, I wish you, you know, very much success. And I know it's just you're already successful, but uh, uh, it's getting there. You know, like you said, it's picking up traction, you know. Yeah, definitely is. Definitely is. Um, I know that you started. um kind of offering these different services for the community. Um, one of those being that you, you have a guided kayak fishing trip. And um, just, you know, tell us a little bit about that. I know a lot of people would be interested in kind of booking something with you. Yeah, of course. So like I said, I'm a social media influencer slash content creator. And with that comes, you know, uh, a lot of people are watching, you know, at first, let me backtrack a little bit. So like I said, <laughs> channel started in 2017. I just uh, recorded some videos, took pictures. It wasn't until about uh, 2021, I want to say, right after COVID, uh, 2021 maybe, I want to say, that I started uh, fishing with my brother, you know. And um, ever since, I would uh, fish, go out and fish and uh, take a picture, throw a fish back in the water and post it and forget about it. It wasn't until uh, one of my videos did pretty well it did it got over like thirty five thousand views like over two thousand likes and a few hundred shares and that's when i like literally a libel popped in my head like okay people are watching you know i, I kind of i feel like i felt like i had a responsibility to put a, a bit a bit more of an effort into my content mm -hmm. so ever since uh i just started trying to put a little bit more of an effort and this was very recently this was as of march as of march uh, i just made a few changes to how i uh do my content creation, how I edit my videos, and how to how I social network. Before I had no clue what social networking was. I heard it all the time, social network, network with friends. But before that, I had no idea really what that meant or the extension of that. <clears throat> Back in March, started doing a few things different and channel is picking up traction now. And uh, with that came getting a lot of messages from local viewers. Hey, I seen your video. If you ever If you're ever in this area, you wanna go fishing with me? And sure. At first, I would fish uh, with a few, a few people, a few locals. Started doing a few collaboration with other YouTubers, other local YouTubers, and I just eventually got so many messages with people trying to go fish with me that I said, "Okay, well, there's, there's, there's some, there's a demand here. 
You know, people yeah. are watching the content. People are struggling to catch fish around my area. Some of the bodies of water in our area are very pressured by a lot of anglers. So it's kind of tough to get on some fish. So what I did, I noticed there was a demand and I just started providing the, you know, what the what the people want. I gave the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've been lucky. I've had a few customers and uh, come out and book my services. And uh, some of them are okay with being on, on camera. Some of them are not. And that's totally fine. I, I asked them beforehand. Uh, you know, if they if they if they're okay with being recorded, that's part of the waiver that I have them sign before they book the services. If they want to be on the camera or not, if they don't, that's totally fine. For anybody that wants to book the services, you guys do not have to be on camera. Not everybody likes a camera in their face, so yeah. and I totally understand that. But that's pretty much how I started doing the the kayak services. It's it, because just the the demand the, that people were were that I felt from the people. So it kind of chose you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess in a way, yeah. I, I might have to, I might have to take you, take you up on 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 your services, man. There's a, I I struggle with bass fishing, man. Oh, it's, man. Um, it's, I got you, man. It's a it's a tough it's a tough thing, man. Like I I feel like in comparison to like trout trout fishing, it's a it's pretty simple. You just throw the line out there and you kind of wait for the the trout to bite it. But with mm. bass, I feel like you gotta with the worm and everything, you gotta drag it along the floor. Yeah, you gotta finesse them techniques. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different techniques, a lot of learning. See, trout even. I'm more of a, I, a bass fisherman. I, originally, I started uh, as a catfish and carp fisherman. Got you. Catching huge fish on very cheap gear. I made it a point to only fish with very cheap entry gear. Nine, ten dollar uh, combo from Walmart. I was catching double digit fish, huge fish. So I just wanted to see if I can do it with very entry level gear and just build from there. And uh, as far as trout fishing, man, I, I know it can it can be pretty difficult too. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh, I have a question for you. Then, uh, sure. as far as like your equipment and stuff, you said that you started out with entry level stuff. Like, what's the comparison? Like, the difference, I guess, is it is it make a big difference versus like something really expensive versus some a little bit cheaper equipment? Does it make a big difference, or do you do you see it? It all works the same. Mm, it just depends. Uh, like I said, I started with catfish and carp. Yeah, and uh, I did a lot of things wrong before I learned what I what I was supposed to do. But I was I wouldn't say I was okay at it. I would pull two, three fish uh, using entry level gear, just your standard gear that everyone has in their tackle box. Yeah. I didn't <clears throat> didn't know much. Started doing you know research on YouTube and all that stuff. Started linking up with local fishermen and, and learning off them. And um, the difference between entry level gear and like I want to say, let's just say what I use now, which is like I want to say medium high end gear. I'm still not using all that fancy high end gear stuff. I kind of I'm, I'm abstaining from it for the moment. So the part of the difference between the entry level and the, and the I want to say, medium high end, what I have now, is you can throw a, a cheap $10 gear, throw it out, put it on a rod holder and catch a fish. But when you're throwing that, that rod out 100 times a day, it makes a difference. You're casting that rod 100 times a day. It just starts weighing on the arm, yeah. you know, starts weighing on, weighing on the wrist. And that's where the, for me, that's where I feel like the difference comes in. When the rod is significantly lighter, when the when the gear itself can help you really pull in the fish, just reel them in. I think that's when the, the gear really helps. The durability of it as well. The durability, yeah. absolutely. Don't get me wrong, the, the cheap stuff, oh man, you, you, you're going to break it. If you're hooking onto some big fish, you're going to break it. I broke a lot of gear. But that also came from the inexperience uh, of not knowing how to use the gear. Yeah. I'm sure we can get into a lot of technical, um, like, hey, well... You know what? What kind of floral line or what kind of clear line or is it yeah. green line or yeah? You know, absolutely. I, I, I want to have a whole different conversation after the podcast about that because yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, if you guys ever want to go out, I'll, I'll show you the ropes. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, nah, definitely. I'm sure it gets very, very intricate. I mean, there's there's a lot of different colors of water and types of fish and running water versus standing water. I'm sure it gets crazy. It's a science, you know. Yeah, it, it feels like it sometimes. Yeah. And I, I know you're actively getting better all the time. So how often do you, um, you know, practice your craft? Do you do you fish a week? Let's say? Well, I'm lucky enough that I'm able to fish uh, quite often, more than most people, you know. And um, I I would I want to say I fish probably at least two times a week. Wow. Uh, the weekends are are a lot better for me. If uh, now that I'm doing the kayak guiding uh, service here. I get booked throughout the week. Uh, I've been booked through in the middle of the week. So I do fish during the week as well. And yeah, man. Plenty I, of time to. Plenty of time to fish. Practice your crafting and perfect it. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, on top of all the knowledge that I'm sure that um, your your parents and your grandparents were able to share throughout, you know, when you were smaller as well. Uh, it, it's helped me as far as um, my brother being older and him teaching me kind of the ropes and, hey, this is how you tie it. This is how you do a knot. This is how you do this. This is how you tie on this one. You know, this is how you rig up this. Um, so, it, 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 you know, it, it goes back, uh, I think, to our foundation, like little little tips and tricks that they taught us, like now has helped us and and, and grown um, to in, into something better and greater. Elijah, Absolutely. sorry, cut you off. Yeah, you no, no worries, man. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask you. I mean, did, as far as your fishing tours and stuff, um, if, what what does that include? I guess when you when you bring someone out, um, do you have a specific spot you already kind of uh, take them to, or you kind of make, give it a a little bit of a mix up or you do, you do you mix it up every once in a while take them to different bodies of water how does that work so let, let me start off by by uh explaining what comes uh, included in the in the kayak uh package here sure. so i have uh paddle kayaks there's a difference there's a few kind of styles of kayaks out there there's kayaks with mortars kayaks with a uh, pedal drive kind of like a bicycle thing in the, on the kayak that, that that's how you propel in the water yeah. and then there's a the good old paddles and that's what I have. I have a paddle kayaks, which is would be entry level kayaks, uh, and that's what I that's what's included in the package. It's a kayak, the paddle. I include two fishing rods. You know, uh, I include a tackle box with a whole bunch of lures. Some of the lures that, that I've been successful at at, at certain spots, nice. and some some lures, some baits that are spe- what you call specialty lures. Mm. Some of these lures aren't even available. Uh, to the public because simply because they're just out of stock they've been out of stock for weeks months and i'm lucky enough that i i'm lucky enough that i have a few companies that 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 send me products you know and uh, i'm very fortunate and uh so I'm, that's how i'm able to have some of these products in my hands and like i said if you go to tackle warehouse one of the biggest online stores for for fishing some of these products have been sold out for weeks wow. and and so i include some of those products in in my in my lures but mostly it's just the products that I, lures and baits that I consistently catch with. Package also includes a small dry bag just so you can put your phone, your wallet, keys, whatever you don't want getting wet. Uh, package includes a life jacket, PDF, imperative, man. I At first I would not wear it, and uh, that was really, really rookie mistake. And uh, But now I wear it every single trip. If we're out in the water, you have to have a life it's it's literally a life jacket it'll save your life yeah um package also includes a free valley shenanigans logo sticker and and as far as uh as far as the 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 places typically i ask a customer if they want to book the services what bodies of water are you familiar with and uh if if they have a particular body of water that they've always wanted to go fish on a kayak with we can make that happen you know but more often than not, it's uh, my viewers, they see the areas that have bought a body of water that I fish, and they're interested in hitting those uh, areas of water because, like I mentioned before, some of the bodies of water that I fish are pretty pressured, man. So it's 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 tough to get on fish. Yeah. So um, right now I'm currently working at Alpha Sycamore Island. Nice. It's, uh, it's a park here in Madeira. It's one of, I think it's the only public access to the river in Madeira. Wow. It's a... Um, yeah. Kind of unfortunate, but most of the most of the uh, most of the land adjacent to the to the river is is like agriculture, privately owned. Yeah. And uh, Sycamore Island at one point was privately owned, and then the uh, River Park Trustway uh, bought out the the property. They opened it up for the public, and pretty cool park. So I I I, I fish that park often. Within the park, there's like five or six ponds in the, in that park. And uh, the ponds are okay. They have their time of the year that they, they produce a lot of fish. But lately, I've been working the San Joaquin River a lot. I love fishing the river, man. It's, it's amazing. What do you fish for in the San Joaquin River? I Currently, I'm fishing uh, bass. Bass. Targeting bass. Yeah. Like I, when I first started, I would target carp and catfish there. But the river holds it a, a plethora of fish. It's yeah. bass, catfish, carp. There's bluegill, crappie, trout striped bass yeah a few people caught, catch striper there as well so but uh sycamore island is going to close in november 10th i believe for, so for they closed down for winter okay they reopened back up in february i was speaking to the to bonnie from a uh, manager of uh, sycamore island and I, I think she said that this year they're gonna stay open a little longer november 10th and they're gonna open a little earlier january 
So that's pretty cool. It gives us more time out in the water. What's the reason for closing? I'm not 100% sure on that, but I, I would, t in my opinion, the reason for closing is just because uh, winter time, you know, a lot of this park is just just like dirt roads. So with the mud and the oh, water yeah. and like the public coming and they probably get stuck out there. I know that's happened to, in the past there. Good points. Uh, I think another reason is like they have a lot of like uh, eucalyptus trees and the, with the storms, just trees falling over. I've, yeah. I've been there before and I see, I've been fishing and seen the tree fall over right in front of me. Yeah. And it's just things that, things like that that just happen in nature. Yeah. And um, not to, not to mention that the, you know, during rain season, the, the river goes up this year specifically um the the river the san joaquin river was closed to the public for a greater part of the summer mm -hmm. for a greater part of the spring and early summer mm -hmm. just simply because the the water was up there man it's too dangerous. current yeah, it's yeah dangerous and it was actually legal for anybody to be in the water on the yeah. water with the wa watercraft you could bank fish but so so i think that's one of the reasons why they keep the park closed during the winter i'm not exactly sure though yeah now i heard a couple people pa had passed away Due to wading in the water and things, it was it got yeah. pretty bad. This when all the ice was melting yeah, this, this really last bad. year. Um, I guess I have another question for you, man. Um, tell me about a, a, an experience that you can remember off the top of your head. Something that's either special or crazy that happened to you while you were fishing. Uh, just, uh, Maybe the what biggest you, fish you had. Yeah, or something. tell us about your experiences. Well, uh, off the top of my head, just right now, a crazy experience that I had very recently. Uh, I want to say two weeks ago. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it in my channel, uh, fishing with my son. T I pick up my son from school. I have my kayak in the car. We get to Sycamore Island to the spot, launch off, make it about 10 feet out of uh, out on the water, drop my keys in the water. Ooh. Park closed like in about an hour and a half. That sucks, <laughs> And man. I'm stuck there with my son, you know, and I'm like, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? At least you so, ain't going hungry there. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Throw some fish there. But, man, like that was a... Uh, w w one moment that comes to mind real uh, quick. Uh, I'm like, man, were you able to recover the keys? No, I was not. Uh, mm. Like I thought, dude, it was it was so crazy because typically I put my keys in my life jacket pocket or my dry bag, but that day just had them in my pocket, and I was just with my son, made it ten feet off the bank. And I probably dropped them in like ten feet of water, you know. Oh, man. And uh, <laughs> I I seen the keys go down, you know. Kind of like a movie, super slow motion. Should I jump? Should I not? <laughs> Dude, that went through my mind. I'm like, oh, should I jump? No, I can't do that. I have my son on the kayak. I yeah. cannot. If I yeah, was alone, no. I would have gone after those keys 100%. Yeah. I would have gone after those keys, but I would have just jumped after the keys. And I probably would have got them too, but they went down to the to the, to the the bottom of the lake there yeah. or pond. I had to call a locksmith to come make me a key and get out of there. You know, I had my son. I, I couldn't, couldn't yeah. do much. I thought about going to the bank and swimming out for them. I couldn't do that. I couldn't leave my son out there. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one moment that comes to mind. Yeah, that's man. That's, that sounds like it, it sucks. Well, hopefully, man. there's not much of the more of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hope not. Yeah. I see you have a, a Monterey Bay Aquarium. Do you do you, uh, pin? Do you do you uh, do ocean fishing? Like, do you do anything? I like I have. I'm. I, I love the aquarium, man. You know, big time. Every time we go out there to Monterey, we go to the aquarium. You know, I I filmed a few. I filmed a tour of the aquarium for people that don't haven't gone to the to the aquarium. Yeah, that that content did pretty well. And uh, I, I do, every time I go to the bay, I for sure will take some rods with me. I have to, you know. And I, I've never been successful. Never been successful out there just simply because I go every, sporadic, you know. It's so different. It's, it's different. You got yeah. There's a learning curve there. Yeah. Uh, my brother, though, however, real lucky. He, he's been able to land fish out there. Yeah. So what, did, yeah. what do you try to fish for when you go out there? Pretty much whatever, man. <laughs> I, 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 like I said, that's totally different. That's out of my wheelhouse, man. That's a totally different ball game. Yeah. So when I go out there, I all throw like shrimp, calamari, you know, yeah, all the local good stuff, stuff man. all the good stuff, man. The stuff that I, there. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I don't know what I'm doing really out there. You know, it's well, different, man. It's like, like every cast is stuck, bro. Every cast is I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know really what I'm doing when it comes to what do they call that, fishing. That water between the ocean and the surf, the like the brackish water, or brackish water. Bra yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's between salty and fresh. Yeah, yeah. 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 They got the sturgeon and yeah, I gotta um, do some of that. salmon and all that. Right, right there out of um, Pismo, like in Avila area, there's a lot of bra bra brackish water, I guess, and there's like there's trout that are a little farther up, but it's they stop it. like once you get close to the, the ocean, obviously. But um, like right there in Pismo area, I've, I've heard that there's people like they'll they'll fish for like stingray and things like that out there. But it, that's pretty dangerous to do. It's um, yeah, I w I wouldn't do that. That's for sure. I know that the river here, Sarawakian River, it's got big fish in there. Yeah, I, I know that there's big fish in there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Have you ever fished the aqueduct? Yeah, I was just there this morning, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, Stri- striper? Uh, we were trying to get on some striper, but we had zero luck with the striper. Um, noticed that the water was moving a little slower than usual out at the aqueduct. Clarity, water clarity is a little better. Dude, today was a struggle day, man. I had a few bites. Almost got a fish, seen him bite my lure, about to set the hook, but just let go of my bait. Yeah. And one of my buddies, I was I went out there with one of my buddies, and he was able to get on a small fish, luckily, you know, because it, mm. it was a tough day right now. You use yeah. lures or do you? It's oh. a long drive, too. Oh. Yeah, no. Go out there to skunk, you know. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's an hour drive out there, hour back, so it's it kind of, it, it's like that sometimes. But even a bite is already enough for some it, For me, I mean, at <laughs> least, I mean, like, even a bite, sometimes I don't get a bite. and Yeah. And, I mean, I don't go as much as, as you do, but um, whenever I do, I'm like, I at least want to bite. At least, you know. Just. It's cool that, like I said, I, I seen, uh, I was throwing a spinner bait. I seen a, a small bass, probably 14 inches, come up to it, actually bite it and let go. It's amazing how these fish will bite hooks and just not hook themselves. Yeah. You know, it's, um, man, I had I had a couple experiences out at the aqueduct, man. We, we used to fish it at night and it gets scary out there at night, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a. Especially now. Mendota and. Those binos, it's kind of secluded area, so yeah, you don't yeah. know what kind of people are going to be out exactly. there. 100%. It was, yeah, there was one night, man, we, we were out there at the, at the aqueduct. We were at Five Points. Uh, mm-hmm. So we were, we were out there, we were fishing, and um, we seen somebody pull up in a in a truck, and they literally just backed it into the water and just left. Like, that was just a crazy experience. We didn't know what was going on. They just dropped it off and just, they pushed it in the water and left. It wow. was some crazy stuff out there, man. Yeah. I know they do a lot of, like, shooting out there, too, but... I mean, he, here in uh, around Fireball Mendota area, dude, they they found cars inside there. You know, yeah. They just find, well, how, how they find the cars is because someone doesn't come back home and they know they're fishing out there. And they've pulled a whole cars out of that area. It, yeah, it can get dangerous out there for sure. There's yeah. multiple factors why it can be dangerous out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I have nephews, and and a lot of those times, like they couldn't go just because it's so dangerous because the the steepness of the oh that too oh yeah of the sides yeah. of the aqueduct. I mean if you know, you slip a little bit, you ain't getting out of there. If, I, I've had friends fall in, man. Yeah. And yeah. they've had to swim like about a thousand feet to the next ladder. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. and that's like, I mean, not everybody can swim a thousand feet in, right. in cold water and fast moving water, you know. Especially kids, I mean. Especially kids, yeah. It's it's. I wouldn't take my son there, you know. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, my, my pops, if he was on here, he'd be talking to you about that. He fell in one time. Um, oh, wow. it, was, it was on Thanksgiving Day. He uh he was out there with the, with my with my uncle and... um. He fell in, man, and he had to swim. He had to swim, and he he got hold of a little crack in the concrete on the side, and he was just holding on to it. And then he ended up falling in again because of the moss. You know how it grows on the side. Oh, so. yeah, slippery, yeah, yeah. Very slippery, slippery. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's insane. Uh, <laughs> it can be an insane experience if you if you don't do everything yeah. correct, man. It's you got to be careful out there. Now we got we, we got to go we got to go out on on the, on the water with you sometime, man. It's a must, man. I got to get some bass. I've only caught like two in my whole life, so Let's I want to make it happen, man. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll be hitting them up. Um, but yeah, follow him on Instagram, guys. His uh, Instagram name is Valley Shenanigans. Uh, he had pretty sure he's gonna be continuing to post content and stuff. So, uh, shout out to you, man. And uh, yeah, wish you nothing but success. Hey, man, thanks for having me, guys. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. I'm on there on all the social medias. You know, I post new content daily. Sometimes I post multiple content daily. Just go ahead and give the Give the channel a follow, man. <laughs> awesome, uh, it's, man. It's good stuff, guys. Really, really entertaining stuff. I mean, it's local for anybody that's here. For everybody that's not local, you get to see something outside in you know, a different part of the country. So I think that it's um, it's it's something that's very interesting to a lot of people. It's interesting to me. So yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. We'll leave his, his uh, information down on the description below. You just click on this, you know, says more, and you'll have all the links there for all his pages and social medias. So you guys can start giving them a follow. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, See you guys next time. See you guys.